It is not our part to master all the tides of the world, but to do what is in us for the succor of those years wherein we are set, uprooting the evil in the fields that we know, so that those who live after may have clean earth to till. What weather they shall have is not ours to rule. While there are many quotes about, and especially given by, our character here today, it is the aforementioned quote that, in many ways, describes how Gandalf saw his role as a wizard in Middle-earth. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today, as per popular requests and last week's poll, we are finally going to talk about the character, history, and lore of Gandalf. But beyond even the scope of only his time as a wizard, but about all of his time in Arda. There are articles and videos that greatly helped with the creation of today's video in the description and cards, so please check those out. My friends, thank you all for joining me. Pull up a chair by the fireside as we begin our tale about Gandalf the Wizard. Aloran, being a name associated with dream, vision, or of mind in Quenya, as he was known as a Maya, was there ere Middle-earth was even created. For he was one of the Ainur, made into being by the thought of Iru Iluvatar. Aloran, along with the other Ainur, many of whom would become Maiar and Valar, took part in the music of the Ainur, and he helped sing the world into being. He would be one of the Ainur to descend into Arda and become a Maya, and just as the Maiar all served different Valar, Aloran would serve a few different ones, Manwe, Varda, Ermo, and especially Niena. He would spend much time with Niena, whom, among the Valar, most understood sorrow, but also pity and courage. Aloran was quite different from many of the Maiar, being less swift to action perhaps than others, but being wiser than all of the others. He has thematic and characteristic associations with light, fire, hope, and counsel, for he was also a servant of the secret fire, that which gave true life in Arda, and was with Iluvatar alone. And he was a wielder of the flame of Anor, the flame of the sun. After the coming of the elves, at times, Aloran would take on the physical form or fauna that was alike to an elf, and he would mingle with them if he was not walking amongst them unseen. He gave them fair visions in their hearts that made elves wiser. This, in truth, was the grace of Aloran, and would be shown in his time as Gandalf as well, for he, even in all of his power, was not a mighty warrior like Aonwe, nor a crafter like Myron. He was a simple Maya, whose heart grew wiser with pity and love, rather than fury or tyranny. His power was more in advice and inspiration, rather than outright action. In such a way, Aloran, during the long ages before the Third, did not truly enter into the annals of the history of Middle-earth. In later days, he was a friend of all the children of Iluvatar, and had pity for them concerning their sorrows, and his counsel would awaken listeners from despair and images of darkness. So there came a time when, in the early Third Age, the Valar held a council during which they decided that, in order to combat Sauron's growing darkness in Middle-earth, they were to send five emissaries, Astari, or wizards as they would be known. They would oppose their peer Sauron and aid the free peoples against him with wisdom and counsel, as opposed to outright force, or that was how it was supposed to be making them take the appearances of frail old men, yet having great strength and durability underneath. During this meeting, Manwe asked where Aloran was, and Aloran, clad in grey, entered the council after a journey, and he asked what Manwe would have him do. He wished for Aloran, who still loved the Eldar that remained in Middle-earth, to be the third messenger of the five. Aloran said that he was too weak for the task, and he was afraid of Sauron, and Manwe responded that that was all the more reason he should go. Thus it was commanded, and Varda said he would not be the third messenger, and Kurmo, who would be Sauron, remembered this, as it seems his jealousy started even back before entering Middle-earth. And so it was that around the year 1000 of the Third Age, near the time that the shadow of Sauron became more prevalent in Middle-earth, Aloran, who was quick to anger and quick to laughter, with a form similar to that of an old man, came to Mytholond and Middle-earth. His hair was white, with a long beard that grew down below his waist. His eyebrows were so large and long that they stuck out from beneath the blue hat of the wizard. He would wear a grey cloak, being associated with that color, 
with robes, a silver scarf, and long black boots. And so he took on the names Gandalf, meaning Elf of the Wand by the Men of the North, which was a mistake as he was no elf. Mithrandir by the Elves, meaning either Grey Pilgrim or Grey Wanderer. Incanus, possibly meaning North Spy by the Men of the Far South, and Tharkun, meaning either Grey Man or Staff Man by the Dwarves. He would earn many more names during his time in Middle-earth besides these, but we shall mostly use the name Gandalf from here on out. After Gandalf's arrival in Middle-earth, he was greeted by the elves Glorfindel, a friend of old who was likely also sent back from Valinor after being reincarnated, and Círdan the Shipwright, who was the most farsighted of all of the Eldar. And so, Círdan gave to Gandalf Narya, the elven ring of fire, for he knew that Gandalf would have more need of it than him in his future struggles against evil. Círdan, of any elf, would have known Gandalf's true nature as a Maya, and it's probable such knowledge would have also passed to the rest of the elves that would be in the White Council. Círdan said that he would continue to dwell near the sea until the last ship sailed, awaiting Gandalf. And so Gandalf journeyed into Middle-earth, never truly having a single home like Saruman would. If Gandalf indeed bore the Elisar Stone from Yavanna as a sign of the Valar's faith to Middle-earth, as a legend of the stone tells, Gandalf would bring that to Galadriel, bidding her keep it for a time until she gave it to him who would take the name Elisar, thus, in this legend, foretelling the coming of Aragorn. Gandalf would be concerned with his mission to discover and help defeat Sauron, even while others amongst the wizards of Middle-earth would turn away from their true purposes over the Third Age. Saruman, chief of the Astari, who would discover that Gandalf was given the ring Narya, would become jealous of Gandalf for many reasons. As the years of the Age passed, Gandalf was ever alert for signs of Sauron. He wandered the northern and western parts of Middle-earth, making friends with many different folk. He would never go into eastern Middle-earth, Around the year 1100 of the Third Age, the Elves and Astari would become aware that an evil entity resided in Dol Guldor and Greenwood, later called Mirkwood. Whether it was a Nazgul or something else, none quite knew. Gandalf would investigate the fortress for the first time in 2063, but the Necromancer, or so the entity was called, fled before him, and the watchful peace began. Three years after the return of the Necromancer to Dol Guldor, and sometime after the return of Saruman from the east, the White Council was formed in 2463. Galadriel wished for Gandalf to be the head of the Council, but he refused, and Saruman, due to his vast knowledge, especially about Sauron, took the position instead. Gandalf would continue to wander, coming eventually to a land called the Shire. He befriended the people there, hobbits as they were known, and during the long winter of 2758, Gandalf aided them as best he could, and he saw the courage, pity, and love hobbits had. In many ways, I think Gandalf related to their humble nature, and though, of course, he loved the elves, great and important as they were, and good men and dwarves, his pity and gentle nature, in himself, that related him so much to Nienna, gave him a special care for hobbits. And alone of the wise, Gandalf gave thought to hobbits, who would play very important roles later in the age. At some point after King Thrain II's disappearance after 2845, Gandalf would journey through Moria, but to no avail. In 2850, Gandalf would go again to Dol Guldur, and this time he would find King Thrain, held in the dungeons. He received Thror's map and the key to the secret door of Erebor from the king, and he was there in the dwarf's final moments, and before leaving, Gandalf learned that the necromancer was indeed Sauron, whom they had been looking for and he had taken the last of the seven dwarf rings that had still been in dwarven hands. Sauron was looking for his one ring. Gandalf would report all of this to the White Council in 2851, hoping to take action against Sauron while he still did not have the one ring, knowing that Sauron could become even too large a threat without it. But Saruman, whose mind was turning towards finding the ring for himself, delayed the Council from doing any action against Sauron. It would be during this council that, as Saruman spoke in error against Gandalf, the Grey Wizard smoked his pipe with the weed of the halflings, sitting away from the council, and Saruman scolded him for it afterwards. During their argument, it was clear that Gandalf cared for the simple folk, and Saruman thought wasting time on such simple folk was worthless. Gandalf, annoyed with Saruman, blew out rings of smoke, 
and put his hand up as if to grasp them. This left Saruman in a dark mood, for it's possible that Gandalf guessed at Saruman's intent to possess the One Ring for himself at that time. It's possible, in versions of this story, that Saruman would also later wonder if Gandalf knew of some kind of connection between the Ring of Power and the Hobbits at that time, which, of course, Gandalf could not have guessed at such a connection. It is a very interesting moment between the two characters. Gandalf and Elrond, before and after the Council, would also talk of Isildur and the Ring, and Gandalf would finish with saying that help often comes from the hands of the weak when the wise falter. Indeed, Saruman convinced the wise to falter, and the time of the hobbits was quickly approaching. Gandalf, in such times as he could come to the Shire, befriended the old Took, and took part in the old Took's Midsummer Eve parties, bringing his fireworks along with him. He told fantastical stories to hobbits, and gained a reputation for taking lads and lasses off on adventures into the blue, although these were likely just rumors, at least until Gandalf met the hobbit named Bilbo Baggins, the old Took's grandson. Gandalf's mind never turned from the fate of Middle-earth, however, and the loss of Erebor and the sleeping dragon Smaug was ever on his mind. By chance meeting, in 2941, Gandalf met King Thorn in Bree, and took the same road with him for a time, and so they discussed the lost dwarven kingdom and the dragon. Thus a plan was made to take back the Lonely Mountain and destroy Smaug, with the aid of a burglar of Gandalf's choosing. While Gandalf missed Bilbo the first time he sought him that year, for the Hobbit was out during the Elven New Year, he met with Bilbo later that month, thus beginning the events of the Hobbit, which, insofar as Gandalf is related, I will quickly summarize the actions of the wizard. After Gandalf gave Thorin the key and the map that Thrain gave to Gandalf, Gandalf would accompany Thorin's company during a great deal of the adventure, being most necessary at times, such as when he saved them from the three trolls, or from the goblins of Goblin Town, or from the wargs with the wizard's relationship with the Eagles of Manway, whose leader, the Great Eagle, Gandalf had healed from a poison wound at some point in the past. During the adventure, Gandalf also found the sword Glamdring, the sword of King Turgon of Gondolin, and he would keep it for the rest of his time in Middle-earth. But other duties called, and Gandalf had to depart from the party, meeting once again with the White Council, who finally decided to oust Sauron from Dol Guldur. After this, Gandalf would go near to Erebor, and unite elves, dwarves, men, and hobbit against the orcs and wargs encroaching on them, thus fighting in the Battle of Five Armies. Gandalf would be present during Thorn's passing, and he would accompany Bilbo on his return journey home, and converse with Elrond and Rivendell on the way back. Gandalf would even visit Bilbo again years later with Balin to discuss news from Erebor and Dale. The wizard had been right, and hobbits could be heroes in their own way. But despite the actions of the White Council, Sauron had not been defeated and returned to Mordor. In 2953, the last White Council meeting was called, and Saruman used deceit to attempt to hinder his allies. After this, Saruman would put a watch on Gandalf and the hobbits. But during the next few decades, Gandalf did much and acquired a great deal of important information. He would learn of Gollum, and had, at some point after Bilbo received it, learned of the hobbit's ring. Gandalf also met the heir of Isildur, Aragorn II, in 2956, and became good friends with him. Gandalf would also meet a young Faramir in Menas Tirith at some point, teaching him wisdom against the wishes of Stuart Denethor. From time to time, he would come back to the Shire, checking up on Bilbo and his young cousin Frodo, being aware of the effects the Ring had on Bilbo. And so we come to the events of the Lord of the Rings, which, again, I shall summarize through the scope of Gandalf. In 3001, he took part in Bilbo's 111th birthday and farewell party, even using a flash of his own to try to cover up Bilbo's mysterious disappearance during the party. He convinced Bilbo to leave the ring to Frodo, whom he told never to use it, and Gandalf left the Shire himself soon after to do some investigating. Even though Gandalf grew unpopular in the Shire, being blamed for Bilbo's disappearance, he still cared about it deeply, having Aragorn and the Rangers put a greater guard on the Shire. Gandalf would periodically check in on Frodo and the Ring and leave. In 3009, Gandalf had Aragorn renew the hunt for Gollum, and he would find the Scroll of Isildur, putting together more of the history of the Ring. Finally, Aragorn had captured Gollum in 3017, and Gandalf learned a great deal from the creature. He also learned that Sauron had gotten to him first. 
In 3018, Gandalf returned to the Shire, knowing that Bilbo's ring was not only a ring of power, but the One Ring. He told much to Frodo, even advising that he have pity towards Gollum, and he made a plan with the Hobbit that would take him far from the Shire. Gandalf would later go to Sarn Ford and tell Aragorn of Frodo's plans. Gandalf would attempt to return so that he could journey with Frodo, but it was not to be so. Not long after, Gandalf ran into Radagast the Brown, another member of the Order of the Astari, who told him to meet Saruman at once. Gandalf wrote a letter in the Prancing Pony for Barlamin to send to Hobbiton, to tell Frodo much, but it was never delivered, and Gandalf went forth. Coming to Isengard, Saruman's abode, the White Wizard took on many colors, and revealed his treachery. And since Gandalf would not join and serve him, the Grey Wizard was imprisoned atop the Tower of Orthanc. Gwaihir, Lord of the Eagles, saved him from his imprisonment, and seeking aid from the Rohirrim, Gandalf went to Edoras and was incidentally given the horse Shadowfax by the King Theoden. He went back north, for then he knew of the Black Riders, but came too late to the Shire, and to Bree, but too early to Weathertop, where he was assaulted by Ringwraiths, and he left a Kirth Girun, before finally making it to Rivendell, where Aragorn was taking the Hobbits and the Ring to safety. Gandalf and Elrond combined their powers and made a flood in the Bruni River to drown the Riders, and Gandalf was the one that made the flood take the form of Riders on Horses. After Frodo healed in Rivendell, the Council of Elrond was called, where Gandalf explained much, and the Fellowship of the Ring was formed to see the One Ring destroyed. After setting out in 3019, Gandalf wanted to take them through Moria on their way southeast, against the desires of Aragorn, but eventually Gandalf did so. They came to the doors of Durin, and eventually spoke the correct password to open them. The wizard led them through Moria, learning what had become of Balin's expedition into Moria. Gandalf would soon come face to face with Durin's bane, who he discovered was a Balrog of Morgoth, another Maya. Gandalf, who revealed some part of his true power, was forced to break the bridge of Khazad-dûm and fight the Balrog from the lowest to the highest parts of Moria in order to save the Fellowship. They fought for days, and while the wizard succeeded in the end, Gandalf the Grey was himself slain. But it was not the end. Iru Iluvatar sent Gandalf back until his task was done. He was the only wizard of the five to be accomplishing his true purpose, so he became Gandalf the White, taking the place of Saruman in the Order of the Astari. Gwaihi rescued him from the mountain peak of Kalebdil and brought him to Lorien. Gandalf the White was quicker to laughter and quicker to anger, being able to reveal more of his power than he could before. He was given new white clothes and a white staff by Galadriel, and the White Wizard soon learned of all that had happened in the days that the Fellowship was without him. He went to the Fangorn Forest, where he began to enact his plans to save Rohan and defeat Saruman. The White Rider, as he was named by the Three Hunters, led Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli back to Edoras, where he saved the King Theoden from the dark powers upon his mind. Gandalf sparked hope in Rohan, and so Theoden led forth his people to war. Gandalf rode with them for a time, before learning that Erkenbrand and his forces were scattered by Saruman's forces at the Fords of Isen. Gandalf, upon Shadowfax, whom he always rode without a saddle, left Theoden and his men, advising them to go to Helm's Deep. He went then to Treebeard, who was leading the destruction of Isengard, and asked him for aid before riding off to find Erkenbrand and his men, saving the Rohirrim at Helm's Deep, while Treebeard's horns destroyed the rest of the army. Gandalf went on to lead his friends from Helm's Deep to Isengard, having a conversation with Saruman and casting him out of the Order of the Wizards and breaking his staff. Grima Wormtongue threw the Palantir of Isengard, missing both wizards, and for a small time it would come into Gandalf's possession. But after Pippin looked into it, Gandalf gave it to Aragorn and left for Minas Tirith with the Hobbit, knowing Gondor needed hope next. Indeed, Shadowfax brought them to Minas Tirith swiftly, and Gandalf brought hope to all the people he saw, from the gates of the Ramas Akor to the White Tower, except to Denethor, who still had his arguments with the wizard. Gandalf saved Faramir from the Nazgul's pursuit as the son of Denethor retreated from Osgiliath to the White City, showing some more of his true power, and he learned from Faramir news of Frodo and Sam who went towards Mordor. But even against Gandalf's wishes, Faramir was sent forth back to the outer defenses of Gondor, even as the armies of Mordor approached the city. And though Gandalf once more saved him, Faramir was shot with a poisoned dart. 
the state of Faramir broke Stuart Denethor's will, so it was up to Gandalf to manage the city during the Siege of Gondor and the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. And throughout the siege, Gandalf gave hope to all men, and then, when the gates broke ere dawn, Gandalf opposed the might of the Witch King himself, Sauron's greatest servant. When Rohan came, the Witch King retreated, and Gandalf, before being able to pursue him, was needed elsewhere. And so Gandalf went to save Faramir from the pyre of Denethor, the steward who thought to slay himself and his son in his madness. But in doing this, Gandalf could not be the one to end the Witch King, nor save Theoden and many others besides. And so after the battle, Faramir, Eowyn of Rohan, and Mary of the Shire all needed healing. So Gandalf sent for Aragorn, who had the hands of a healing king. Soon there was a last debate, and Gandalf was nominated by Aragorn and the others to lead the West in one final throw against Sauron, the fallen Maia. Gandalf knew the price all free peoples were paying, around them and in the North, but he had one idea that could work. Thus, Gandalf's proposal to draw Sauron's attention away from the Ringbearer was accepted, though they should all come to a likely defeat in the end. And the host of the West went to the Black Gate for the final battle. Gandalf spoke to the mouth of Sauron, flashing light and taking the items of his friends Frodo and Sam presented to them. And he rejected Sauron's terms utterly. And so the Battle of the Black Gate was fought, and beyond all hope, Gandalf's plan, as well as Frodo's pity towards Gollum that Gandalf had advised in the beginning, saw the One Ring destroyed. Gandalf's quest, given to him by the Valar thousands of years before, was finished. And so Gandalf rode upon Gwaihir to find Frodo and Sam on the slopes of Mount Doom, saving them from destruction. Great were the celebrations afterwards, and Gandalf, at the request of Aragorn, placed the crown of the king on Elisar's head, blessing him. He would also go with King Elisar to find a sapling of a new white tree to plant in Minas Tirith. Gandalf would go with the group of elves, men, hobbits, and dwarf, headed back into the north, and he would come again to Isengard, thinking it rather ill done that Treebeard released Saruman from his imprisonment, for Saruman still had some hurts to give. Indeed, they would come upon Saruman on the further road north into Eriador, and Gandalf saw the wretched and pitiable state of Saruman, but let him be. He would have a meeting with the elves in that company before Galadriel and her folk went east back to Lorien. Gandalf would come to Rivendell again, and then on to Bree with the hobbits, before leaving them so that he might talk with Tom Bombadil, who he called the Moss Gatherer. Eventually, in 3021, the time came for the Ring Bearers to depart the world, and Gandalf went with the others to the harbor at Mithlond. There he wore the Ring Narya openly, and it was hidden no longer. Shadowfax, Bilbo, Frodo, Galadriel, and Elrond would all take the ship with him that Círdan, who had indeed remained all this time, had ready for them. And so Gandalf, the only wizard to achieve his task and return to the west, did just that. The ship crossed the sea, taking the path to Valinor. Aloran returned home, alongside new friends from Middle-earth, and truly he accomplished all that he was tasked with, and much more besides. Nearly every victory in the Third Age is due to Gandalf in some measure. And through wisdom, counsel, pity, compassion, and love, Gandalf saw the victory of the West and the downfall of Sauron. From the history of Gandalf, we see that no matter what we fear, if we face it with courage, wisdom, counsel, and many friends, we shall have victory in the end. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this episode on the history of Gandalf. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections on the history of Gandalf? There is so much information on this character, even in this rather condensed version of his actions, so please let me know in the comments below. For me, Gandalf is one of my favorite characters of all time, as he inspires both real people and other literary characters as well. And it's quite clear that he is one of the characters that does the most in the entire Legendarium. To further support the channel, please check out our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, Merch, and Patreon for a podcast and Discord server. All of those links are in the description below. I want to shout out our Valar tier patrons. Adrian De La Tour, Chris Ortner, Peter Shepard, Samuel McBee, Jonathan Putnam, Mark Kralik, Blair Scouten, Tobias Goldner, and Ryan Ramsey. Thank you guys so much, it means a lot. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with a live stream at 1pm Eastern Standard Time. 
everyone, as always, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.